Acts 2.2. 2. Then the day of Pentecost came and they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. That's a pretty good church service. Tongues of fire. I want to speak to you today about receiving fresh fire. Receiving fresh fire. Holy Spirit wants to impart fresh anointing and presence on you in this season. Amen. Do you believe that? This is a season where God, it's good. This is a season where God wants to release a greater dimension and anointing of Holy Spirit upon His church. And I want to examine this topic of fire today because fire is not something that's just for the holy rollers, for the crazy tongue talkers. Fire is for everyone in the church of Christ. And if you study scripture, you will see that fire represents stages in our life and it has a very practical outworking in your Christian walk. The fire of God, it comes to refine and redefine you. It's the anointing of Jesus to restore and heal and realign you. And it is the anointing of Holy Spirit that comes to fill you, to make you capable of going out and doing your assignment with the supernatural authority of God. And we need fresh fire in this season, amen. The church needs a fresh outpouring of the fire of God. Fire is key in Scripture. Fire is mentioned 474 times in the Bible. It's a few camping trips. There are two types of fire in the Bible. There's fire that comes from God and there's fire that comes from the enemy. And today I'm going to unpack both because throughout your year, these two fires will be competing for your attention. God's fire in the Old Testament, it can represent different things. It can often be a picture of judgment in the Old Testament, but there are many examples of fire coming to bring spiritual transformation and change to an individual and the church. Think about Moses at the burning bush. That was a fire moment where God was depositing into Moses fresh transformation, alignment of identity, and then an anointing so he could go forward and set the Israelites free. It's about restoration and wholeness. And then it's about being filled with a greater anointing. And God has burning bush moments for the church this year where God deposits his nature and his anointing upon you so you can walk forward in this next season full of victory and full of the supernatural realm, what he's called you to impart. You know, fire can be scary. I've had some scary fire moments in my time that I won't go into. But when we read fire, it it can be freaky. But really, when God wants to impart fire, when he wants to bring a fresh dimension of encounter and presence to your life, it's a positive powerful moment. It signifies change and restoration and you going up to the rung of the anointing ladder. It is a very, very necessary thing that you need to have in your life, the receiving of the fire and the presence of God. And I believe this is a season where God is going to take you, take his church on a fire journey where you encounter the presence and receive anointing and fresh impartation for your life. The key person in this story in Acts, I believe, is Peter, isn't it? He's leading the church. And God takes Peter on a fire journey. This is the culmination of the fire journey. He's in the upper room. He's leading the church. He receives fresh fire and impartation from Holy Spirit. And then he steps out and he delivers to God 3,000 people in one sermon. That's not bad. It's just slightly besting my own record. (laughs) That was a joke, obviously. But that's incredible. That, that, If you think about that, that is a picture of the church that has been filled with fresh fire. It's a picture of you and me functioning in the dimension of the spirit realm that we are called to function in. It's a picture of you 
operating with a supernatural ability in the lane that God has called you to in this city to bring in a dimension of the spirit realm on earth and to bring people to Jesus. Peter had to go on a fire journey. Over the course of 50 days, Peter encounters three fires. And I'm going to go through these three fires today because these three fires are key moments in his life that bring to him total transformation and change and change the church at last, at large, forever. It's a season of accelerated progression where Peter at the first fire is a total wreck and at the last fire he is functioning in a level of spiritual dominion and authority. It's a picture of where God wants to call us to and I believe that we are in a spiritual prophetic season where God wants to take you on a journey of supernatural accelerated growth. Amen. The degree of change in Peter is amazing. If you look at his life 50 days prior or 51 prior to the day of Pentecost, it is hard to believe that it's the same man. And you would think that it took years and decades for Peter to get to that moment to be able to preach and and bring 3,000 people to Jesus. But really, it's a matter of weeks. I believe that if we take our opportunity this year to press into God, have a hunger for fresh anointing and fire, God will take you on accelerated growth and transformation. This is a season to receive fresh fire. It's amazing what God will do with a person that is willing and able to receive from the Lord an impartation of healing and then an impartation of anointing in the spirit. Fresh fire. It's a prophetic time. So as I speak today, I just encourage you to be listening to God, be in tune with what God wants to release because this is a season where you will receive a fresh encounter and God will turn your world upside down. Amen. So let's get stuck into it. I'm going to take you through the three fires of Peter. Why don't you turn with me to Luke chapter 22, verse 54. Okay, this is the night Jesus was arrested. Then seizing Jesus, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with Jesus. But Peter denied it. Woman, I don't know him. Woman, (laughs) I don't know him. The first fire that Peter deals with is the fire of failure or the fire of disqualification. It's a fire that's lit, that reveals things within us that are out of alignment. This is a fire, unfortunately, where people are often contending with and are positioned in front of in the day-to-day of their lives. The fire that Peter sits in front of, it is a fire that represents the heat of the world. The heat of the world, it's not a fire that's lit by God. This fire is lit by the enemy. It's the heat, the pressure of the world that causes us to develop false belief systems, to embrace lies and to feel like we are disqualified from moving forward in our walk with God in areas of our lives. This fire does two things to Peter. It presents itself as comfort, but within Peter, it creates chaos. And it exposes Peter's weaknesses. And then that forms a false belief, a false belief system, which gets him to confess a lie. And then he puts himself on the shelf of failure. This fire comes in the form of comfort it, and it comes to expose our weaknesses. It's a fire that comes from the heat of the world, from the pressure of the enemy, from stress, anxiety. What it draws out when the fire gets hot, when life gets difficult, is a false belief system that we are a failure in our walk with God, that we are disqualified and it is a fire that is sent by the enemy to derail Peter. Now think about this. Peter at night, in this scene, he's at night, he's alone, 
He's probably scared and crushed by the pressure of the events that are unfolding. Think about the chaos that is happening in Peter's life. And then he sees a fire and he's drawn to it. Just like the comforts, the distractions of the world come to us in our weakest moment. And then it exposes within Peter something that he can't reconcile with himself and his walk with Jesus. And he develops a belief system that he is defined by that fire. The enemy wants us to be defined by the hate of the world, not by the life of Jesus. And it leads to a wrong confession. There have been plenty of times in my life where I've been influenced by the hate of the world. I'm sure we all have. There are people here today where you felt the hate being turned up in your life and you felt exposed and weak. I'm here to tell you that like Peter, you were called to get up and move on from the fire of failure and be positioned in front of the fire of God. The enemy wants to use this to create a false belief system, a mindset that perpetuates for the rest of our Christian journey. When it says that the, the crowd kindled the fire, that word kindled, that means to tie around like tying around the neck or to fasten to. The enemy was trying to attach to Peter a belief system that he would never progress, that he was defined by weakness and failure. And there are lots of things that have come to us in our life where the enemy tries to tie a lie, a false belief system, which gets us to confess and believe in our inner worlds that we are defined by a mistake and not by the life of Jesus. Yeah, there are periods where our, our frailties just seem extra emphasised and highlighted. I think that these periods are not necessarily a bad thing if we only sit in front of them for a short period of time. Jesus knew that Peter was going to fail. He knew that this stage was almost necessary for Peter. Remember, he says to Peter in Matthew, Peter, Satan is going to sift you like wheat. And Peter said, Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> That's a good one from Jesus. But... In other words, he's saying, Peter, there's a time coming in your life. There's a time coming for you in your workplace, in your inner world, relationships, walk with God, where you are going to be influenced by the hate and you are going to feel like a failure. You are going to feel exposed. But I'm telling you this, Peter, I'm telling you this today, church, because Jesus sees the other side. And you might be camped in front of a fire today, but he's saying to Peter that you are going to progress quickly. You're going to go from the fire of failure to a fire of dominion and glory. The issue for us is that within our hearts and our minds, we are camped in front of this fire perpetually and it goes like a loop, like a circle in our lives. Peter fell before Jesus had died. He's not living in the resurrection life of Jesus. We are living in the resurrection life of Jesus today, but there are areas of our mindset and our inner world that are not influenced by the reality of who we are in Jesus. They are defined by the fire. And Jesus, I believe, is saying to the church, it's time to stop being camped at the wrong fire. It's time to pursue a new level of intimacy and relationship with Jesus. intimacy. Yeah, it's interesting. I was talking to Andrew about this story and the servant girl here, it's interesting that the servant girl in the scripture, it says that she saw Peter in the firelight and she recognized him and she started to call out to him who he really was. You could say in a way that this is like a picture of of the Holy Spirit reminding Peter of who he is. She's saying, hey, you're not supposed to be here in front of the fire. You belong with that guy over there. But because Peter was so distant from God, because he felt exposed, he takes that as condemnation and he disqualifies himself. There are times in our life when there's an area of weakness, there's a false belief system, there's something wrong and it seems to get accentuated and highlighted 
and we feel condemned even more. But it could be the Holy Spirit pointing to that area of your life and saying, you don't belong in that mindset, in that belief system, in that pattern of behavior. You belong over here with me and I'm coming to remind you of who you are today. Because Peter was distant, he took it as condemnation. It's about intimacy. That's why Peter stumbled upon the fire. He was following Jesus from a distance. It says in some translations that he was far away. That denotes a great separation. You know, Peter was a little cocky. He was... He was a bit of a lone ranger in his walk with God. He was self-sufficient. He thought he had it all to do. But I think those characteristics show in Peter essentially a lack of worth. If, you, if you're distant from God, if you struggle being distant from God, distant from the church, I would say that you might have a self-worth issue. Peter had already come up short before God, before this occurs. He was distant from Jesus because he was being defined by the mistakes that he had already made. He gets attracted to the fire. He falls victim to the heat of the world and that finishes him off. What this was revealing within Peter was a need for renewed intimacy, close proximity with Jesus. Because when you're close with Jesus, there is no heat in the fire. Amen. There's no heat in the fire. If Peter had walked with Jesus, he would have walked straight past the fire. And this is a time when Jesus is calling out to that area of your life, that mindset where you feel like a failure, he's wanting to burn it up with intimacy in the secret place. It's time to move on and pursue close relationship and intimacy again with Jesus. And there are areas where our issues are highlighted and we begin to condemn ourselves in our heart and in our mindset. Well, that disqualifies me. I'm going to stay distant from God. I'm going to disengage. I'm going to check out of my walk. And Jesus is saying, it's time to come to me again. Amen. Peter denies Jesus and the rooster crows. And it says that in that moment, I love this, it says that in that moment, Jesus turned and looked right at him. That must have been awful for Peter. (laughs) What a terrible moment for Peter. But when it says that Jesus turned, what that word means, it means that he inclined in that moment his whole disposition and he engaged and literally locked right into Peter. And the word looked, that means to look upon someone with interest, love and concern. Peter, with his confession, was turning away from Jesus. But as G- as Peter turns away, Jesus turns towards that area of Peter's life with renewed love and concern and he is locked in. And I believe he is inviting Peter back to a new season of intimacy. If you Think about an area of your life where you might be turning away from Jesus. You might be falling short in the reality of who he's called you to be. As you turn away in your mind and heart, you feel condemned. Jesus is locked in in you in that moment. He's locked in on your life, locked in on that area, and he is saying to you, I love you. I want you to come towards me in a new season of intimacy because I'm going to take you to the other side. I would encourage you to pursue a new invitation this year to be intimate with Jesus because you were too important to be camped in front of the fire of failure. Amen. This city needs you to know who you are. Yeah. Amazing. The worst moment of Peter's life, but Jesus is beckoning him to a new season of relationship. There's a story of Peter in Acts 4, I think it's 9... 13 where sorry chapter 4 13 where he's he's preaching in front of the Sanhedrin right the 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 lawmakers the Pharisees and they look at him and it says that they saw that he was an uneducated 
ordinary man, but they saw that he had been with Jesus and they were astonished. Think about that. That means that after this moment, Peter got intimate with Jesus and his failings, his shortcomings had no power and authority over him anymore. What had the power was that he was intimate with God. What the world saw was not, they saw his failings, but they had no power because he had intimacy with Jesus and they were astonished by what he carried. That means that he did not stay at this fight in his heart. He moved on with intimacy with Jesus and the world saw the relationship he had and that was the authority in his life and not the fire. I want to encourage you to walk with Jesus and I prophesy that over that area of your life that it will be a quick transition like Peter, a quick transition Think about this. If Peter, if he was here today and denied Jesus in front of you, February the 11th, that means that by early April, he would be leading 3,000 people to Jesus at Pentecost. That is an astonishing thing. I would ask you, do you believe that Jesus could bring a similar transformation to your life this year? Do you see that area that's weak? Do you believe that that area could be totally transformed, that could carry a measure of anointing and authority that could reach this city and bring people to Jesus? If you can't, I would encourage you to pursue Jesus in this season. Be close and intimate with him. Amen? Drastic change and transition. 50 days, the worst moment to the greatest moment of his life. Amazing because he pursued Jesus. It's time to get up from the fire of failure and get into close proximity with God. Turn with me to John chapter 21, verse 7. The verse always helps, doesn't it? 21. So Peter, he has failed. Jesus has died and he is resurrected. And this is the moment where Peter is going to be reinstated and restored. It's a really important fire to sit in front of. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, telling the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals on it with fish on it and some bread. This fire is much better. This fire is lit by Jesus. And the purpose of this fire is for you to be fed. This fire is designed to feed and restore the church. Where you have experienced failure and pain, the most important thing you can do is come to Jesus and allow yourself to be fed by him. Peter is in the boat fishing, right? He's going back, casting the net down Flinders. And he he has essentially, he's gone back to his old life, the old mindsets, the old belief systems before Jesus. He's basically gone. He's been attracted to what he feels worthy of. And Jesus is saying, no, no, you're worthy of me. I've got better things. Come and be fed. When John tells Peter that Jesus is on the shore, he goes by faith and he gets fed by the fire. This fire is a fire of restoration and reinstatement. In your life this year, Jesus wants to bring rapid and powerful, full and complete restoration and reinstatement to your life. Amen. You need to be fed from the fire. Peter eats fish and bread. The fish, that is a picture of Peter's calling 
an assignment. He's being reinstated in purpose, reinstated in anointing. And the bread, he is being reinstated in his identity, who he is in Jesus. Peter is dealt with in both areas. His identity is restored and his calling an assignment because Jesus cares about your identity and the health of your inner world just as much as he cares about your assignment. Amen. This is a season you can't skip. He wants to deal with both in Peter. He wants to deal with both in you. And if you want to walk in wholeness, you can't skip this process of being restored and fed by Jesus. If Peter just ate the fish, he wouldn't have the ability to carry the anointing and the breadth of the assignment. Jesus is going after his identity. Everywhere at the fire where he's failed, where he's confessed the wrong thing, Jesus just sets the scene up here absolutely perfectly. I I won't go into it in full detail because it'll take too long. But it's amazing what Jesus does. He sets the scene perfectly for Peter. Peter meets Jesus in a boat, which is where he met Jesus the very first time. He's got the fire, the fire that's there to overrule the fire of failure. He gets Peter to confess. He gets Peter to be fed on the truth of who he is and who his assignment is. It's kind of like a father who's got a prodigal son. And when the son's coming home, he puts the old pictures up on the wall. He puts the old footy game on. He puts everything. He does the room just right like he was when he was a kid. He's doing everything to take Peter back to that moment of validation and wholeness to remind him of who he is. And it's feeding from the fire of Jesus that changes the scene for Peter. You need to be fed from the fire, amen. Yeah, there's there's a story of Jesus feeding the disciples in the Last Supper. And it says that he gives them the bread. And that literally means to change the scene day by day towards his divine power. As he's feeding Peter from the fire and he's getting him to confess after being fed in the secret place, he is changing the scenes, the painful moments in Peter's life. Unfortunately, the scenes of our lives don't always look very pretty, do they? It's not, if it's like a movie, it's probably not a hallmark and a rom-com in your life, I would imagine. Some of our scenes look like, like a horror movie or a, or a tragic drama. It's not a Jane Austen. Peter, the recent scenes of his movie, I love my movies, it's like a tragedy. Jesus comes to change the scene. He gets Peter to be fed from the fire of the secret place, from the fire of restoration, from the fire of the reality of the cross and who he is. And he changes the scene in Peter's life. Jesus is coming to the church today to change the scene in your life. This is a time to be fed and to be restored by the fire in painful moments. You can't skip this step this year because I believe Jesus has called each of us to have our own Pentecost moment when we are pouring out the Spirit on those around us. And you need to be fed from the fire by Jesus before you do that. Amen. It's a time to be fed. Jesus does everything to set Peter up for a 100% restoration and reinstatement. Have you ever thought about what 100%, 100% restoration would look like in your life today? Not a little bit, not 50, 60, 100% total restoration and reinstatement. I believe this shows us that if we take the time to be fed from Jesus, that 100% restoration and reinstatement is the church's right. Amen. 
It's the fire where we go, we posture ourselves before Jesus and we give him access to the painful areas and we allow Jesus to change the scene. It's a time of renewed secret place, renewed worship, renewed feeding on the word, renewed and picturing what Jesus has done, what he's called you to do. It's a time of confession of the truth of who you are. Peter got out of the boat, the old old belief system, the old mindset, and went to be fed from the fire. 3,000 people needed Peter to be fed. There are areas of our lives, particularly in the last few years, where the old mindsets, the old comforts, the things that feel familiar have come up for the church because it's been a challenging season. It's been confusing. There's been disappointment. God wants you to get out of the boat of that false belief and he wants you to go to the shore of the secret place and be fed in the fire. It's a time to be fed. It's a time to allow Jesus access. You remember Peter was distant. He was not vulnerable with God, but this is a change of heart. This time he is out of the boat and he is swimming towards the fire to be fed. It's a time to have a heart attitude that is postured with openness towards Jesus. He will feed and restore you. Amen. Fish and bread, calling and identity, 100% restoration for Peter. You can't have acts without this part. It's really important that we are vulnerable and open in the secret place with Jesus in this season. I don't know what that looks like for you, but I just want to encourage you, pursue being fed. Be hungry for more of God this year. Because he will outpour an anointing on you. He will cause you to be filled So you are now not just being fed for yourself, but you are the one that feeds others because you carry a measure of authority and breakthrough and anointing in that area because you have taken the time to be fed. This is my last point. Go back to Acts 2. So we've got the fire of failure, the world's fire. We pursue intimacy and then we have the fire that feeds restoration and reinstatement of purpose. And fire three is the fire that fills and equips, the fire of power and anointing. Peter and the 120 were in the upper room. Peter has gone through a fire journey that's taken him from failure to restoration. He is now ready to be filled and equipped. He's got the capacity to carry an anointing that can change a city. This fire is the one where God wants to accelerate you to this year because this fire is not just about your own edification. This fire is about you filling the world with with the reality of the kingdom of God. It's about you imparting and releasing fire onto others. When it comes to our purpose and function, your calling, every failure, every experience, every trial is leading up to this point. It is the training ground for fire three. And that is the purpose of your life is to be filled and equipped so you can release the kingdom of God on earth. It's the call of the church. Every failure is not there for you to be defined. It's so you can be prepared. It's so you can be restored, receive a greater dimension of who Jesus is to you. Identity is whole. And then you are ready to be filled with an anointing and a mantle that you can release onto others that changes a city. This passage, it signifies the eternal fire of God. It means that which transforms and touches into light and likeness with itself. At this point, I am thinking big. I have healed and I now have the capacity to be filled. I've got a hunger and a desire for Holy Spirit to come and be a physical presence in my life that brings an anointing to others that leads them to breakthrough and a revelation of who God is. It's believed that the the tongues of fire that was released here was the same pillar of fire 
that led Moses and the Israelites across the Red Sea. And it says that this pillar was split and landed on each of them. That means for all of you today, God has got a pillar of fire. The purpose of which is to release freedom, is to take people across their Red Sea and into breakthrough and relationship with Jesus. That means that the purpose of your life today is to be filled and equipped so you can release fire on a city. How is it that Peter, seven weeks prior to this, was denying Jesus and then today he has received fire and is now releasing it on the 3,000? It's because he has prepared himself to be filled. It's a picture of God's invitation to the church in this hour. This year is a year where you start to pursue the desire to be filled with Holy Spirit, which is more than just our own individual needs. It's about carrying an anointing. It's about being willing to embrace a mantle that God wants to use you through you to release freedom onto a city. It's about reforming a city with the anointing of Holy Spirit. And some of you might be anointed to get up and, and preach the gospel in front of thousands of people. There's at least a couple here for sure. But God has chosen you to have a similar impactful calling and anointing in whatever field, wherever he has positioned you in, in your life and in this city. It requires an upper room hunger and posture. It requires being prepared to be filled This is a season where God wants to give you the capacity and the hunger and the desire to carry an anointing because he has set aside a pillar of fire. The pillar that Moses carried was one meant for him that would lead a nation across the Red Sea. It has been split to every member of the church. Everyone is called to carry the fire of Holy Spirit that would bring deliverance and breakthrough. It's about our capacity and our preparation time in this season. And if you think about the idea of that, if you think about the idea of, of carrying an anointing, of getting prepared to go out there and change a city, of serving people, if that fills you with, with apathy or with fear or unbelief, I would say to you that in your heart and your inner world, you might be sitting in front of the wrong fire today. And Jesus wants to heal that, wants to cr crush that lie and take you to a place where you are in an upper room moment in your identity where you can carry the fire of God. I believe there is no one here today that has not been called to carry a pillar of fire in this city, to receive an anointing of Holy Spirit on your life, on the words you speak, on the ideas that come into your head for business, in your workplace, in your school, wherever it is God has positioned you, He has called you to be a fire carrier for Him. Think about Peter. Peter, 50 days prior to this, it looked like his life was done. Probably the last thing he wanted to do, the last thing he felt capable of doing was to have the capacity to carry an anointing that was meant for more than him. There are plenty of times in my life where I've related to that, but Jesus wants to take me and you on a fire journey this year where we are overcoming the influence of the world where we've postured ourselves to be restored and healed and we now have the capacity, the hunger and the desire to carry a greater dimension of the spirit that would set the captives free. And I just believe that this is the season for those that want it where he's going to release fresh hunger, fresh capacity and a greater level of anointing. You wouldn't believe that Peter could get up there under an anointing 
anointing and lead 3,000 people to Jesus, people will say the same about you. Amen. I believe that he has called you to do something of similar value. He's given you an anointing and it's time to pursue the desire and the hunger to be filled. It starts with posturing ourselves before Holy Spirit and asking for more. Holy Spirit, show me how I need to prepare. Give me the capacity to be filled. Open up the door of anointing. I'm hungry. Come and heal my heart, Jesus, in this season. Be positioned before the fire. Amen. Peter is a picture of you and me in this season prophetically. Amen. I just encourage you to pursue the anointing of God upon your life. Be hungry and expectant that God's going to use you to impact a city. Why don't we why don't we pray right now? I'm going to close. Why don't you stand with me? I, I want to pray for two areas. Thank you, Josh. Why don't you reach out your hands? I thank you, Jesus. I just want to pray right now for the fire that restores and reinstates people. I just pray right now for those that have been struggling with areas of their life where they feel like a failure, where they feel like they don't measure up. And we just crush those lies right now. I thank you, Jesus, that in this season you are coming to restore us and renew us. And I pray, God, that like Peter at the fire, that this would be a season where identity and calling is restored over you. We just crush the head of the serpent that has come with a lie of disqualification, of not measuring up. And we just declare right now over your life that you are restored. I pray, God, that you are releasing over people right now the healing love of the fire of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. And I just prophesy over that area, total restoration and reinstatement. I thank you, Lord. I pray you would make the secret place come alive for people in this season, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. And I just prophesy over you right now that where the enemy when it comes to finances, where the enemies called you a failure, where you felt like you'll never have the ability or the capacity or you're not worthy of carrying more, we break that off. We declare total restoration of finances and calling right now. I thank you, God, over relationships where, there be, where there's been pain and heartache and you felt exposed and unworthy, I break that off right now and we release the fire of restoration. And I pray right now, Lord, that you are raising up people in confidence, in calling and purpose where the enemy has come and said that there is no capability, that you're not good enough. Jesus is burning away the lies of the enemy and what you are being restored like Peter. And I just declare a triple fold restoration and anointing on your life. I pray, God, that you would set on fire right now, calling and purpose. We break off wrong belief where the enemy has come in, even in childhood, and has said that you will never succeed, you are not good enough, we break it off and I declare, like Jesus declared over Peter, triple fold restoration. I pray that your life is set on fire right now in confidence and boldness and the victory of the cross. I thank you right now for a fresh baptism of your love over that area right now that burns away every painful thought, every painful word that's been spoken. We just declare 
a hundred percent restoration. And I thank you, Lord, for a fresh baptism of fire. I thank you, Jesus. I release over you the baptism of the Holy Spirit for those that are hungry right now to be filled with more. I release the baptism of the fire of Holy Spirit. And I prophesy that a physical dimension of the Spirit is coming to your life that would set the captives free. I thank you, Lord, that you've been called to set the captives free. I prophesy a triple, double portion, whatever it is, of the anointing of the fire of Holy Spirit right now. I thank you, God, that we stand before you like Peter, worthy and capable and hungry to be filled. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for an anointing that that parts the Red Sea in this city. I prophesy over over people that are called to business and government, people that are in schools, people that are in uni. I prophesy a physical presence of Holy Spirit, a pillar of fire that is activated in your life that would set the captives free. I thank you, Lord, that we say by faith that we are hungry for more. I thank you that this is a year where apathy is broken, where unbelief is broken, and what is left is restoration and wholeness and a hunger to be filled. I thank you right now. And we just declare that this church is a pillar of fire church, amen. And everyone who comes here carries the fire of Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 